Okay, I hope I can get through this part without crying. For the rest of the day, I would literally start crying. Like literally on the plane, I was like, this is the best gift ever. <sighs> best gift ever. This is... Hello my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be just kind of an impromptu, fun video. I'm gonna tell you about this past weekend. Adam and I went to New Jersey for two days. I didn't vlog anything, I didn't Instagram anything. There was not any time. So I'll tell you all about that. And then also while we were there, my sister-in-law, my sisters, and my best friend threw me a very small, like just literally immediate family, baby shower. We're gonna go through some of this stuff. It's just gonna be a fun sit down. So I am the hot mess express and let me explain. We flew out on Thursday night. Our plane took off at 10.30 and landed at six o'clock in the morning. So I was like, that is so perfect. We'll get a full night of sleep. We'll land, we'll get our rental car. We will drive it to my dad's house. We will trade cars. My brother and my father switched cars. My brother has a pickup truck. They switched cars overnight. Adam and I were staying at my dad's. So we traded our rental car with my dad who traded with my brother, get it? So we got my brother's truck, drove to U-Haul to pick up our pod, basically the U-Haul box, drove it back to my dad's, packed all day, continued that through Saturday because we had so much stuff we had to get packed out of the house. And then Sunday we had to return the pod, come back to my dad's, get everything all situated, packed, ready to go for the plane, pack the car, get ourselves showered and ready, and then head to my sister-in-law's by noon for this little intimate, adorable, sweet baby shower. Then our rental car had to be back at the airport at six, we were an hour away, and our flight took off at 7.30. So we had a lot to do in a very short amount of time. I wasn't really even near my phone half the time, I was just in go mode. So was Adam, I swear I wouldn't have been able to do any of it without him, but I was joking with him. I was like, well, I wouldn't be doing it without you because first of all, I wouldn't be having a baby in my belly and second of all, I wouldn't be moving across the country if you weren't here, so that's a joke. He was unbelievable. I'm really good with the time zones and the time difference, except on the plane, I just saw 10 to six in the morning and I'm like, that's perfect. We're gonna get a really good chunk of sleep, forgetting that the flight, like the time zone changed over. So technically it was 10.30 at night, was when it was supposed to take off. We probably took off closer to 11 by the time you get situated, fall asleep. I slept most of the flight, but it takes a little bit. Really, I was waking up at three in the morning. So we were exhausted. I slept probably three hours. Adam slept maybe one. We went to U-Haul where they told us that the pod was and it was not there. They were like, we don't have this. We don't have pods here. Adam was like, oh, here we go. I'm sorry, the mask on the plane for so many hours gets my asthma going and my heartburn makes it worse. It's just like, way too much all going on at the same time for my poor little asthmatic lungs. So the whole next day after I fly, which is not gonna happen again, hopefully during COVID, and definitely while I'm pregnant, I can't do this anymore. But this was a necessity. I had to get all my stuff out of my dad's house. He has to move. That's all to say, I apologize about all this coughing. So we got to the pod place, they didn't have it. Adam was like starting to melt, like what? This was the whole reason we're here. I asked the guy, can you just do me a favor and look it up by my phone number or my name? He did, the pod was at a different U-Haul about 30 minutes away. We drove there, it worked out beautifully because the woman that worked there, actually the woman and the guy that installed the hair tray. Oh, shirt. I am so sleep deprived. The guy that installed the trailer hitch, they were amazing. She was asking us questions like, what are you packing? What do you guys need? What do you have? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know, nothing, we have nothing. So she was like, well, I suggest this many wardrobe boxes. I suggest this many little boxes. I suggest this many medium sized boxes. I don't think you need any big boxes. All of our appliances and everything we have here, like the TV, you guys sent us so much stuff. We got so much stuff donated. I left majority of my appliances that I already had for my dad. We had just a couple of big things. The rocking chair that my mother used to rock me in when I was a baby, my dad let us have. So we took that, I have a rowing machine that we took and everything else was really just stuff that fit in boxes. We stopped to get breakfast before that. I think we stopped to get breakfast before that. In between, okay, when we left the first U-Haul place, and we were going to the second U-Haul place, we passed a diner, we both knew that it was time to eat. After we got the U-Haul box, we literally made it home with 10 minutes to spare for Adam's call. This was with a senator's office that he's helping with the 924C law and all that stuff, so it was really important. So I got him set up on the Wi-Fi at my dad's house. He got on the call, I could hear him for about five minutes and then I passed out for about two hours. He woke me up because we had a second call that we had to be on together with a documentary film crew, which we'll tell you about that more another time, but that's gonna be really fun. It's not for us, him or both of us, I'm not sure, are just gonna be a little part of it. We did that, I was kinda like, 
out of it, but it was what it was. And then after that, we just started packing literally all day. He literally packed this pod. I don't know if prison helped him do this, which is gonna sound crazy. That might be in its own video in itself because Adam grew up in prison. He went to prison at 18 years old, did three years, got out for like three years, and then went to prison the rest of his adult life and got out six months ago, 20 years later. So he grew up, he learned everything he learned in prison. He's a brilliant man, he's a genius. But the way that he knew how to pack this box and front load it, he was like, it's like a game of Tetris. I'm like, is this fun? <laughs> He's after no sleep. He's like, yeah, so much fun. But he knew exactly where to put stuff, exactly how to pad things. It was so incredible to watch. I am not the OCD one of the family. Just like, whatever, go with the flow, like throw stuff in a box and go. Not the way that you want to pack a house. Thank God he has those jeans. Hopefully baby Clawson has those jeans. Probably around six. My sister-in-law called, she has a stroller for us. A really, really nice stroller. I can't wait to show you guys, but it's packed in the U-Haul box. They live about 30 minutes away. So we just hopped in the car, because at this point it looked like it was gonna rain. And we wanted to get that drive out of the way and then finish as much packing as we possibly could. Made that in like an hour. And you should have seen the two of us on YouTube trying to figure out how to close a bugaboo. <laughs> from her driveway, she wasn't home. She was on her way to a party like 45 minutes late, so she just left it out in the driveway for us. Angel. Finally figure out how to close this thing from a YouTube video. <laughs> it's great. Drove back, packed the box a little bit more. Then we decided to go, because we told my dad we would come back to the restaurant for dinner and hang out with him for a little bit. That was probably around 9.30, 10. We didn't even know if the kitchen would be open still, but it was, thank God, because Adam's been dying to try this food. Last time we were there around Christmas, they were closed for COVID. So they were open again, obviously limited capacity, masks and all that stuff, but at least he got to eat, get the experience. He loved it there. My dad had a great time. We didn't stay for very long. Then I wanted to vacuum out the room, dust, do all that stuff. We were up and down the stairs with all kinds of stuff in boxes. So we made a mess on the stairs. I vacuumed out the stairs and everything was just good and done. Showered, went to bed, got up Sunday morning. He was pouring. I had brought like this cute little skirt outfit to wear for the baby shower. And I was still debating doing it, but it was like a cold rain, even though it was 60 degrees, which was awesome. It was like a cold pouring rain. Drove the pod back. My dad helped Adam hitch it on, drove it back, which was kind of like a scariest drive. You got this huge pod on the back. It's pouring, you can't see, in a truck that's not ours. Adam was driving back and forth between the rental car, my brother's truck, my dad's truck all weekend. So it's like you didn't have enough time to learn and get used to driving in a new car. So it's kind of a little bit difficult. So it took us a little while to get there, dropped off the pod. The guys at U-Haul were incredible again. Excellent experience. Shout out to U-Haul in Edison, New Jersey. You guys were amazing. Stopped at the diner, had a delicious breakfast. Went back to my dad's. I got Adam set up on the Wi-Fi again. He wanted to download videos for the plane while I got myself showered, dressed. He got a message that our flight was two hours delayed, which kind of worked in our favor because like I was saying before the party, blah, blah, blah. We had to stop and take care of stuff going on with the flight and the rental car and check in and it was giving us all kinds of issues. So we wound up about an hour and a half late. But the party was unbelievable. They did like a balloon arch, a backdrop with a gorgeous dessert table. I could cry just talking about it. They did give me a bag of small gifts and then they sent me a gift certificate because one, I'm not registered yet. I promise you guys I'm doing it. You've been asking me. I just needed this trip to New Jersey to know what I got. I don't know, I forgot what I was saying, pregnancy brain. My little neck pillow from the plane. They actually let us not carry this on as carry-on, carry it on as like a bag. The lady didn't want to at first because I had my huge purse and this was just kind of an extra bag. And she's like, what's in there? And I was like, oh, just baby shower gifts. And she was like, okay, let me see your purse. Which is, you guys, it is, look at it, it's enormous. Adam calls this a suitcase when I use it as my regular purse. Do you know it's a superstition? You never put a purse on the floor. I do it all the time, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed, it's supposed to make you lose money. I think it's a wives' tale. So people keep their bags off the floor and the germs off of them. But I always fly with that and then a carry-on because it works as a personal item. Oh, and by the way, security was crazy and might do another video on that. Like how Adam was feeling a little bit about it, like after prison and how it was kind of bringing up, stirring up some stuff. On the way there, I was wearing a tank top with a sweatshirt over it, leggings and sneakers, a denim jacket, 
and I always fly with a scarf so I can take it off like a blanket scarf and use it as a blanket on the plane. To get through security on the way there, I took off my jacket, my scarf, my shoes, you have to, and I was going through the little body scanner thing, which uh, this is another reason I don't want to fly again while I'm pregnant is because like I've done that, that's the second time I've flown during this pregnancy and I'm like done with that radiation for him but my boob started to go off i got that same feeling that you get when you're going through the metal detector at prison visit and something happens and it's like a, this huge flash of anxiety like it's gotta work so she's like listen i have to pat you down she said we can go in a separate room like a private screening or we could just do here and i was like i don't care just go go for it and it was fine there was obviously nothing there on the way home my girl parks and my boob started going off all I had on was leggings. I was wearing a regular bra, but there's like no metal on that except for the clasps in the back. And I had my scarf, the same scarf on as a shawl with a little pin on it, but I took that off with my shoes and passed them through the scanner. So I really just had like a little long sleeve t-shirt on and leggings. I have no idea. Adam got through. He let me go through first. He comes through. The woman saw that and I could see, she wasn't making it up, like I could see the picture of the scanner and it has like a box, like a dark box down there and on one of my boobs. So she said, you're gonna have to pass through again. So I literally had to pass by Adam go through again and she's like i'm gonna have to pat you down so reminiscent of prison visit and she's super nice but she's like i could take you into a back room we could do private screening i'm gonna have to put my hands in your waistband feel around and then on the outside you know feel around this area and i was like just do it i'm fine i don't care which number one i feel like that makes me look less guilty of whatever you know they think could possibly be there and number two i could care less i'm a pregnant woman i'm about to show that to the world all of the medical students whoever is going to come like it doesn't that stuff doesn't bother me but also i'd rather be out in the open where adam can watch versus alone in a private room with somebody where like something could go down that i don't have control over because it's like their word against mine you know just thinking about like the prison wife so she feels around i mean she, very respectfully everything was fine and she's like i have to take I don't know if it was the gloves she was wearing or if she had like you know you guys know because they have that little piece of whatever it is when they do this for you a prison visit for the drug scan for the ion scanner and so she's like i just have to put this through the machine so she did adam was like is everything okay is everything okay i'm teasing him now because i want to lighten the mood for him too because my nerves are going and i was like it's probably the baby that they're looking at like joking but loud enough for her to hear i mean you could tell i'm pregnant at this point i just think that you can't but I wanted her to hear so she knew to treat me with kid gloves. She's like, you could go, everything's fine. So that was like our little scare at the airport. I literally just got off the couch now at 1.20, so probably like one o'clock. Grabbed myself Starbucks, threw a scoop of protein in there because I'm not even hungry. I mean, I ate breakfast, but I'm not even hungry for lunch yet, which is gonna be a Chipotle salad because I'm craving the hell out of it. But I figured I would stop and make this video, just tell you guys where I've been. I didn't post on Friday because we were flying. I didn't have time to make a video. But I think I might just start doing Monday and Wednesday videos and then try to do more lives with Adam because for some reason, for the past like month or two, nobody's really watching my Friday videos. So I'll get like a couple thousand views on my Monday, Wednesday videos. My Friday videos will get like 500. And sometimes they're really good topics and they're just not getting views because I guess people are busy on Fridays, which makes sense. So. I think I might cut them down. We'll see, but let me know in the comments below what you think about that. If you're missing my Friday videos, if you're not getting notifications, if you're just busy on Friday, then that would work better for you. Just let me know what you think. But that's my thought process moving forward, especially as I kind of start losing my steam. We'll see. Okay, I hope I can get through this part without crying. You know you're Italian when your father will not let your husband leave without freeze-dried sausage and cabagol. Gotta love it. And then I said to Adam, I was like, do you want it? Like, do you want to take it? And he was like, of course I do. It's good. So I was shocked that we got that on the plane on our carry on, but we did between that and the bagels. I was like, we're gonna be the Italians on the plane with dried sausage and bagels just going to town. We should have had some cheese there. The flight attendant was having a great time with us because he's like, they sent you home with bagels? That's the cutest thing ever. I'm like, do you want some? We have plenty. My best friend, she's so crafty. She does the most amazing things. She made me the most adorable little shirts and there's one that made me sob. At first I looked at it and I was like <laughs> joking with her and then it just started like pouring and I was like <laughs> sobbing. Every time I thought about it, 
for the rest of the day, I would literally start crying. Like literally on the plane, I was like, this is the best gift ever. And it's in here, I'm gonna save it for last because I'll probably cry again when I show you guys, but it's best, best, best gift ever. So this is a mama shirt, the original, and then the baby's shirt says the remix. Are you dead? I'm dead, I love it. Then we have the mama's shirt that says troublemaker, the baby trouble. Aren't these the cutest? I don't know if she has her Etsy shop set up, but I'm gonna ask her because Look how adorable. This stuff comes out so good. Don't touch the baby nose karate. Hand picked for earth by my Nana in heaven, which is what all of my mother's grandkids called her. Nana, it means grandma in Italian. Mm, I love that one so, so much. Hooded towels and washcloth for my nieces and nephews. My niece picked out this receiving blanket. It is so soft. It's so pretty. It's just, oh, I love every second about this. My niece tried to come home with me in my suitcase. <laughs> my other sister gave me these. And then these, I'm obsessed with all of these things with like the little caps for the baby boys and mittens, which are perfect because I was just watching a YouTube video this morning where the woman was saying that for some reason the hospital didn't cut the baby's nails. So her baby scratched her face all up. So she recommended mittens and I was like, or onesies with mittens. And I was like, oh my God, I never even thought about that. I think this is so, so cute. A little elephant tummy time. Is that upside down? A little elephant tummy time pad. This is so soft and sweet. And we can't wait to meet you, love your cousins. I promise there will be a name reveal. They got him these adorable. Oh my gosh. These little booties. Oh, do die. I'm obsessed. I still have drippy makeup from last night. I'm a mess today, but here is the one. Literally made me sob. Best gift ever. This is handwriting from my card that my mother gave to me that she took two and a half years ago when my mom died and she made me like a reusable cup and a candle holder with like beautiful purple flowers and lights. I would show you guys, but literally they're all in the U-Haul pod on their way here. But I totally forgot. I didn't even know she would still have that. So when I open this up and it's a baby's onesie with my mom's handwriting on there. Literally, this is my mom's exact handwriting off of the card and she did it in purple because that was my mom's favorite color. Let me know what was your favorite in this haul. Oh, and she made me one more thing that I love, but I'm gonna save it when we talk about the baby's nursery because it goes along with that theme and I will explain it when I have the other bits and pieces of stuff that I'm waiting for. One's in the mail and then the rest of it are coming in the pot. The rest of it are great English. Anyway, I was gonna apologize for being informal, but no, because we're besties and we hang out and the day after I fly, when I have drippy makeup, when my hair's piled in a bun on top of my head because it's four days dirty, I'm wearing biker shorts and a t-shirt, not showered. That's how you know we're best friends, so no need for apologies. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.